Tonight on Huckabee, U.S. Representative from Tennessee, Chuck Fleischman. Georgia State Representative, Misha Mayner. Extreme acrobat, Kristen Sandu. And country gospel singer, T. Graham Brown. That's Trey Corley of the Music City Connection. And I'm your announcer, Keith Bilbrey. What a great crowd we have. I love it when the audience comes and they're just having a good time. And that makes for us to have a good time. And we're going to have one tonight. Now, I don't know if you keep up with the news, but was this the week that even the media were forced to pay attention to a corrupt justice system that is colluded to protect the Biden family from the same scrutiny and prosecution that you or I would be subjected to? Maybe. First was the explosive, revealing, and well-documented testimony by two IRS whistleblowers who told Congress under oath that the tax case alone against Hunter Biden was treated differently than any other they dealt with, and that the Department of Injustice had intervened to give a soft landing to the president's son for alleged serious crimes. Now, this was much unlike the treatment that would have been ever given to any other person accused of the same crimes. But then an even more stunning development happened. Hunter Biden appeared in the Delaware federal court for what was supposed to be a rather quick, in and out, low key, guilty plea for a couple of minor misdemeanors on tax evasion. While all the felony charges of being a drug dealer, possessing a firearm would be dismissed and the tax charges would not even be charged as a felony. It was supposed to be truly the get-out-of-jail-free card that would also prohibit additional charges being filed for failing to register as a foreign agent. And that's despite his numerous business deals with Ukraine and Communist China. It was a glaring example of his last name resulting in treatment that never would be afforded to a young black man, or for that matter, anyone who dared to vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> now, these were crimes that normally under the federal sentencing guidelines, would put a person in the federal pokey for at least 10 years. But Hunter's attorneys played too cute by half with a stupid maneuver on the eve of what was supposed to be his cake walk in and out of the federal courthouse. It was all slated to not be a slap, but a mere soft touch on the wrist followed by, I'm sure, laughs and several rounds of drinks to celebrate how much smarter they are than the chumps that the rest of us are. So one of the attorneys on the Biden team actually called the court clerk and pretended to be an attorney from the House Oversight Committee and asked that the whistleblower testimony be removed from the case file that was supposed to be presented to the judge. This stunning unethical and boneheaded move was uncovered, reported by the New York Post, and it caused the judge, Mary Ellen Noriega, to blow her own whistle and refuse to accept the sweetheart home cooking baked by the prosecutors who let Hunter's defense team provide the recipe. Judge Noriega was having none of it. And before the day was over, Hunter didn't have his little deal. The defense attorneys were revealed to be unethical tools of corruption whose deposition was just disastrous and their deception might get one of them disbarred or criminally charged. And even the media finally were forced, finally, to start asking real questions about this scandal that smells worse than a chicken processing plant in the hot August sun in Arkansas. <laughs> Trust me, I know those smell bad. I have spoken of there being a double standard of justice many times, but I think, frankly, there is actually a triple standard of justice operating in America right now. And unless decent law-abiding citizens, judges, attorneys, and members of the media demand that it be cleaned up, we can kiss this country goodbye. The now three-tiered system of justice is one system 
for average citizens, which will be very harsh and mostly unforgiving when it comes to crimes involving drugs, guns, and tax cheating. Another and a much harsher system for any Trump supporter or outspoken conservative, pro-life, Christian, or America First advocate that's likely to land a person in prison for a long sentence. And that's after a humiliating arrest by a SWAT team. And then there's finally a third system. And that system laughs at the law and consequences for breaking it. And to be in that system, you just need to be a Democrat with the last name of Biden, Obama, or Clinton, or be close enough to them so that our alphabet agencies like the FBI, the DOJ, the IRS, and the DHS will just nod, wink, and wave you right past all the checkpoints. But finally, this week, some of the veneer of the weaponized and politicized government started washing off and it is revealing the rot within the deep state that is long overdue to be eradicated, like ridding ourselves of rats in the basement. Let's hope it's not happening too late to save this great republic. Okay. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy said this week, that he's open to an impeachment inquiry of President Biden, and plenty of House Republicans are lining up behind the speaker on that. My next guest is a conservative Republican who represents the 3rd District of Tennessee in the U.S. Congress, and we're happy to welcome Chuck Fleischman back to our show here in Nashville. Well, what a crazy time to be in the Congress, right? Yes, but Mike, we need more conservatives in the Congress, so crazy time, but a time to save our great nation. Well, I think uh, what the speaker did this week, I'm 100% behind him with, and that is he's not rushing into articles of impeachment because um, that's not going to go anywhere in the Senate right now, but he's saying we'll open an inquiry, which means that there's a little bit more teeth in what the Congress can do and bringing witnesses forward and getting information. Well, Governor, you're so right. One of the greatest travesties in American history and American justice were the two failed impeachments of our late great president, Donald Trump. I mean, Donald Trump did nothing wrong twice, yeah. and Nancy Pelosi impeached him. That was outrageous. But um, right now, we've got to be careful. I'm a lawyer by profession. We want to be thorough. We want to get all the facts out. I trust Jamie Comer and Jim Jordan to get it right. Yep. And we're going to get the truth out for the American people. And I think that's uh, something that I've been saying to people this week is don't push members of Congress to rush in because we need to get the facts dribbling out so that the media just can't, can't ignore it anymore. They have to report it. They have to look at it. And even Democrats in the Congress will have to say, some of this stuff I can't defend. You would hope so. But I tell you what, the Democratic Party today, whether it's in the House, the Senate, or the White House, um, it's a party of disgrace. What they are doing to this country, look, Republicans and Democrats have always had differences. But when you see what the Democratic Party has done, but thank God Republicans have the House of Representatives. We retired Nancy Pelosi, which is so important. Yeah. McCarthy and his leadership team, yes, are doing a good job. I, I think they are, and it's not easy because there yeah. are factions within the Republican caucus. So, you know, it's not that everybody agrees on everything. Congressman, uh, this week was another week where uh, the special counsel, you know, that's going after Donald Trump, files some more indictments. But every time that happens, his approval and his support among voters goes up, not down. Explain that for us. Well, Governor, as you know, I'm a great fan of Donald Trump's. I've endorsed him. Uh, I think he was a great president. <laughs> and I want him back. <laughs> I want him back. <laughs> now, having said that, um, this special counsel, whether it's in New York, whether it's in Georgia, and now they, they went from 37 to 40 uh, uh, charges or trumped up charges, excuse the pun. But when you look at it, you have to say the American people are smart. We believe in the rule of law. We believe in God. We believe in the Constitution. And the people know better 
than these prosecutors that are doing this. And every time they take a jab at President Trump, his ratings go up. Why? Because the American people know better than these radical left-wing pundits. The, the whistleblower testimony this week yes. was very revealing. And one of the whistleblowers is admittedly a Democrat. He's a liberal. But he's also a, a person who loves his country and believes in the rule of law. And what he saw, he knew he could not be silent about anymore. So do you think things are beginning to, to break free a little bit more? I hope and pray so. I think so. Ultimately, the truth comes out, and I think it will come out. Uh, but the American people, whether you're a Republican or Democrat or Independent, want a fair and impartial justice system. That's part of the backbone and the fabric of our great nation. And when you see two or three standards of justice in yeah. your country based on what your political ethos is, people stand up and say, no, I don't want that. Uh, I believe in the American justice system. I'm a lawyer, but it is broken right now in some places. We need to fix that for the good of our great republic. Final question this week. Robert Kennedy, obviously a Democrat and running for president, was sitting before Congress to talk about censorship, and his own party did everything they could to try to censor him in a committee hearing about censorship. It was the greatest irony I've ever seen in the committee hearing. Liberals love free speech when it's liberal speech, but when it's conservative speech, they move to censor. But once again, all across this great nation, people are coming together, conservatives are rising up, standing up for our Constitution, for our great Bill of Rights, and guess what, Mike? We're going to get this country back. We're going to keep the House. We're going to win the Senate. We're going to get the White House back and turn this country around. Well, obviously, that's what we need to do. Yes, Congressman, sir. it's always great having you here. Perfect. Thank you for coming back, and uh, you do a great job of representing those folks over in the Chattanooga area in the 3rd District of Tennessee. Now, for our audience, you're going to want to follow what the congressman's up to online, and you can do that with all the links that we have for you. If you go to Huckabee.tv, we will connect you directly to the congressman. Right now, Keith Bilbrey is standing by, and he's going to inform all of you what we have for the rest of the show. Stay put. Well, after the break, CEO of the Fellowship, Yael Eckstein, talks about rescue efforts in Ukraine. Then later, country gospel singer T. Graham Brown performed all tonight on Huckabee. MikeHuckabee.com and sign up for his free newsletter and follow at GovMikeHuckabee on Twitter. Israel is celebrating its 75th anniversary as an independent Jewish nation. So it seemed like a perfect time to welcome back my next guest, President and CEO of the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews, which is marking its 40th year of helping countless people all over the world, from impoverished Jewish families to Holocaust survivors. Please welcome my friend, Yale Eckstein. Yale, great to have you here. Thank you so much, Governor. It's wonderful to be here. I feel like I'm coming home. You are coming home. <laughs> you know, you and I have developed quite the relationship over the years. I have seen firsthand what the fellowship does. I've walked shoulder to shoulder with you, not only in the warehouses as we pack some food boxes, but then into the homes of elderly Jewish Holocaust survivors. It's hard to explain what a difference the fellowship is making in the lives of some of these people. Well, it's been incredible being with you in all these different situations, walking the streets of Jerusalem, tasting bamba, the Israeli tea yes. for the first time, <laughs> packing those food boxes. And when I step into the homes of those Holocaust survivors or the orphans, I always stop and say a little prayer that, Lord, this is what it's all about. All of the traveling, all of the working, all of the packing the food boxes, it's about that meeting between me, between you, between our hundreds of thousands of Christian friends who stand behind me, going in to that one old lady and giving her hope and food. That's what it's all about. It always impresses me when we go in and the food box is delivered and we're able to say to them, there are Christian people in the United States who are making this possible. And sometimes there is a look of surprise because a person living in Israel, Jewish individual thinking, 
Christians in America. So it, it has an impact, doesn't it? Wow, that is one of the most meaningful things to me. When I see the face of a Holocaust survivor change and say, ah, maybe there is hope for the future. Yeah. I think of the uh, words of our prophets, mm. there is hope for your future, said mm. the Lord, and the children will return to their land. And when I go and bring a food box in Israel to a Holocaust survivor who is persecuted by Nazis who identified many of them as Christian, who killed their family, many of them identified as Christians who killed their family. And I come and I say, that's not it. Yeah. This is it. These are the Christians who love you, who pray for you, who provide for you, who read the scriptures and do everything, give sacrificially to make those words come to life. And I, I think many of us are appalled to think that there would ever be an association yeah. with Christians in the Holocaust, but there was that perception. And certainly there were some people in churches who did do that because they were too fearful, too cowardly mm -hmm. to stand against the evil that was going on. So I am so grateful that fellowship is giving genuine Christian people an avenue through which we can say, we love you. Without there being a Jewish faith, there wouldn't be a Christian faith because our faith is built on the foundation of all that the uh, Jewish people are about. And our future is also tied together. And that's why it's such a powerful partnership. And you've been leading this for a while. Before that, your father created this extraordinary ministry, but it's taken off to whole new levels under your leadership. And I have a feeling mm -hmm. he must be looking down with great pride to see his daughter taking this uh, organization to, to hundreds of thousands of people who need. I feel like I have the backing of millions of prayers, Governor, mm -hmm. and that's what gives me strength. And it's Jews and Christians in Israel and America and Canada and Korea coming together to say, Lord, we serve you. We are one. Christians that say we are grafted onto that rich tree of Israel. And through that, seeing biblical prophecy come to fruition, I was just on a flight from Ethiopia, mm. from the lost tribe of Dan that the fellowship brought home to Israel. And then I was in Moldova with Jews from the former Soviet Union that we brought home to Israel. We just brought, a week ago, our 100th Aliyah flight mm to Israel from Ukraine since the war began. So there have been 500 days of war and 100 Aliyah flights that Christians are bringing the Jewish people home. How awesome is that? I think that's an important point to make. Certainly so many of the people the fellowship helps are in Israel, but you're also doing so much work beyond the nation of Israel. And you mentioned the Ukraine, this war-torn country where Jews are truly under siege and being able to bring thousands of them to their new homeland, their ancient homeland, what a blessing. And you're a blessing, and I thank you for being with us, and we're always excited. I look forward to seeing you, I'll say, next year in Jerusalem. And I hope before that. Hopefully so. <laughs> thank you so much, my friend. Thank you thank always. You, now, if you want to learn more about the very important work of the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews and how you can help, if you'll visit Huckabee.tv, we'll tell you exactly how to do it. Right now, Keith Bilbrey is going to be telling us what we have cooking up on this show. Well, up next, the danger and intrigue of extreme acrobat Kristen Sandu. Later, Georgia Representative Misha Maynard makes her switch to the grand old party. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Kristen Sandu is the son of an immigrant circus performer who is amazing, and his balancing and acrobatic skills took him to the finals of America's Got Talent, as well as to major TV shows, sports events, and performances with top stars from Jay Leno to Justin Bieber. That's quite a spectrum. 
So steal your nerves. It's time to welcome back to the show the amazing Kristen Sandu.
Give him a big hand. Kristen Sandu. Wow. You know you're crazy. I know. Right? Oh, yeah. That's insane. You had us scared to death. How many of you need <laughs> a cardiac machine right now? That was fantastic. That's I mean, you do this deal. stuff at sports arenas. You've done a lot of yep. NBA shows. But corporate events? Yep. I mean, this is incredibly entertaining, but it's also scary to watch. It is. It's a lot of work and a lot of dedication. How many times do you, do you fall getting ready for these things? <laughs> a lot. Do you really? It does happen. Yeah. No kidding. It does happen. Thank you for not falling tonight. I did my best. I'm glad. <laughs> I'll tell you, our attorneys and insurance people were scared to death. So it's just great having you here. We always love having you. We know we're going to have you back. And I hope people all over the country will be booking you for events because it is amazing, without a doubt. If you want to see more of the amazing Kristen Sandu and book him as a performer or speaker for your event, if you go to Huckabee.tv, we will connect you with him. Right now, from that incredible balancing act, we turn to the incredibly unbalanced Keith Bilbrey, who is going to tell us what's coming up next. Oh. Keith? Okay, well, coming up next, Misha Maynard on why she left the Democrat Party. Then Father Leo prepares a delectable homemade pastry. Don't go away. Welcome back. I think one of the great parts of the show is the phenomenal music. And if you're not here in the theater, you only get just a little taste of it. But boy, do we ever enjoy Trey Corley and the Music City Connection. Let's give them a big hand. I'm so looking forward to our next guest. Misha Maynard is a longtime Democrat who recently made headlines all over the country because she left the Democrat Party to make history as she became... <laughs> she became the first female black Republican state lawmaker in the Georgia state legislature. Now, she says all the publicity has been a great opportunity to get her message out, and that's exactly why she's here tonight. I want you to give your nicest, warmest welcome to the newest member of the GOP, Misha Maynard. <laughs> Nisha, this, this must have been a difficult decision. You've been a Democrat your whole life. You've served in the legislature that way. What was the breaking point for you? The breaking point is really the policy. Hmm. At the end of the day, school choice, that's the hill that I will die on. Hmm. In my district, we have kids that 97% of the kids can't read. 98% are not meeting uh, math proficiency. And if the Democrats drew a line in the sand that said, we will not help these kids, then I don't want to be on that side of the line. You know, that's bold. That is bold <laughs> on your part. I don't understand, because Democrats are supposed to be for the little guy. They say that. Right. But there are a lot of kids that are being crushed by government schools and their moms, their dads, they don't have a choice. They got to go here because that's where the government says you got to go. All school choice does is say to a parent, it's your child, you decide where that child goes. Why is that so controversial? I think it's the teachers unions. At the end of the day, um, the Democrats are really led by unions. Yeah. And in Georgia, the lady over, I don't want to mention her name, but she sends a video out literally every week. And when I was a Democrat, she would put videos of me up telling my Democrat colleagues, we need to get her out of office. She doesn't need to be here. She's not one of us. And you're right, I'm not. You took some real heat. I mean, I've seen some of the horrible things that people have said toward you because of this change that you've made. Does it just make you want to crawl up under the couch in a fetal position and cry? or? How it do you react to that? It doesn't, and I'll tell you why. It's because I am a child of God. Mm. And 
Dang it, Todd. <laughs> Amy, wonderful. You know, if he be for me, then no one can be against me. What and a great outlook. You know, they can say whatever they want to say. I know a lot of people are saying the death threats and all of that online. Uh, we are taking care of that, but it, that is not bothering me. You know, what God has for me is what it will be. On the other hand, you have had an enormous number of people who have saluted you and have said, Misha Maynard is showing some real courage. Yes. So I guess that balances it out. But what are some of the more meaningful things people have said to you, having taken the stand that you've taken? I would say my constituents. So I represent downtown Atlanta. If people come to Atlanta and they visit, most likely they're visiting in my district. Immediately when the news came out, they were texting me, emailing me saying, I don't care what alphabet is next to your name, yeah. we're voting for you. That's so wonderful. And, and I, I think you would be a very perfect person to explain that many people living in urban areas, they may have been lifelong Democrats, but they more than anybody support school choice because the people who live in the rich suburbs, they can afford to send their kids to whatever school. But the kids in the inner city, they don't, have a, they don't have a choice. So that's something I think that gets missed. A lot of your constituents are probably saying, thank you for they standing are. up for us. They are, absolutely. Um, you know, it's not just school choice, though. It's public safety. The people in my community that I represent, they don't want crime in their community. So they yeah. don't want to defund the police. They don't want to put systems above them. So I tell people now that I have had the courage to say, you know what, enough is enough. You may have put on this Democrat coat, but have you actually looked at the label to see what it's made out of? Mm. And so I think we really need to dig deeper. As a policymaker, I'm reading the, the legislation, and the legislation that Republicans are putting forward supports minorities and people of color. It supports... Um, people living in lower socioeconomic communities and the Democrats, every single thing against it. You know, a lot of the criticism came from some of the leadership in the African-American community, which I find uh, unfortunate. You've even been called, and, and this is to me bizarre, a racist, a <laughs> racist. You're black and you get called a racist. I don't understand how that can even well, happen. Well, I'm also a member of the KKK apparently. <laughs> you probably are the blackest member the KKK has ever had, just so you know. I mean, that kind of stuff, I think it's laughable and it makes <laughs> fools out of the people who say stuff like that. How do you even, how do you even deal with it? Um, that proves the point. So I'm gonna let them have a cat fight. I'm gonna <laughs> stay above the par and I'm gonna just continue to do things that support my constituents and I'm not going to listen to the naysayers. I plan on winning my seat next year in 2024. I need your viewers. I hope our entire audience will get behind you and support you and help you because I know there's gonna be a lot of the party people who will say, okay, she's changed parties, we're done with her and they'll try to target you. I'm sure there'll be uh, more than one opponent that will be thrust up against you. Uh, I think those of us who believe in school choice, who believe in you, it's not about the party. It's not about being Republican or Democrat. It's about fighting for the people that elected you. I think we appreciate that. We want to see people move forward and win. So I hope a lot of people will join me because I'm going to be supporting you. Thank and you. I want to see you reelected to basically say to all those folks, you see, yes. principle matters over politics. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Misha, I'm so proud of you, and I'm grateful. I think you showed a lot of courage, but you have instilled courage in other people and caused them to say that they're going to give that Isaiah, here am I, send me, and thank you for being that stand-up person. And for those of you who are at home, you can learn more about Misha Maynard on social media. If you go to Huckabee.tv, we will connect you, and I hope you will connect with her. Right now, Keith Bilbrey, I hear we got something kind of tasty coming up. Tell us about it. Well, you're going to love it. Father Leo of the Table Foundation makes some mouth-watering goodness next. Then a musical performance by T. Graham Brown. You're watching Huckabee.
Huckabee.tv and get your very own Made in the USA Huckabee mugs, t-shirts, and more. Oh, this is going to be good. Because to say our next guest has a unique set of skills is putting it mildly. Father Leo Peta Linhug is a Catholic priest, but he's also, give him a hand for that, but he's also an award-winning break dancer, martial artist, author, winner of the Food Network Showdown with Bobby Flay. He's the host of the popular cooking show, Savoring Our Faith, and he's the founder of the Table Foundation and the Plating, Grace, and Grub Food Truck. Wow, how is that for a resume, huh? Now he can add, he tried to teach me how to cook. Let's hope it's not his first failure. Please welcome Father Leo Padalin Hug. Thank you. Great Governor. having you, Father Leo. Oh, pleasure. This is exciting. I was going to ask you to break dance for us, but we don't have time. We're going to have to get right into the recipe. Not a worry. What I'm doing right now is I'm going to be making a puff pastry. Okay. So I'm cheating. I'm not a baker. I'm a savory cook. Mm. But what I'd like for you to do, if you can just kind of butter these up. These Absolutely. Puff pastry. I and we're going to be butter making stuff with paste. the best of them, man. Yeah, I believe I sure you. can. And I'm going to be making a dish in honor of St. Anangelicum, whose feast day in the church was on July 26th. Now, a lot of people don't know who she is, but she's actually Jesus's grandmother. Oh, really? Yeah. And so this whole movement, Plating Grace, is all about bringing families back around the dinner table and making sure they eat together. Because honestly, if you cook well, your kids are going to listen to you because they can't talk with their mouth full. You think that works? Okay, good food. for you. So all right. once we get this in the oven, it's actually going to come out looking like this. This is the magic of TV. Oh. And what I've got some... Fruits. Yeah, that looks different than this. It looks a little bit different. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And what I've mixed here is, you could use mascarpone cheese. Mm -hmm. I just use some softened cream cheese. Okay. As well as some sugar and a little lemon extract. And here's the beauty. This couldn't get any easier. This is something that kids, grandkids, and grandparents can do because I think what we've got to do is bring generations back to the table. Yes. And food will do it. Totally good. And so here's what we're going to do. You've okay. seen me. I've made some here. We're right. just going to take a little spoonful just like this, okay. and we're going to top it off with any type of berry you want. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to just basically layer another one right on top. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of like a Napoleon, so to speak. Uh, Napoleon would be kind of like a layered dessert with puff pastry. And you can see how easy that is. And I yeah. don't know if you can do this. I'm sure you can. We're just going to hit it with a little bit of powdered sugar. Uh -huh. And it makes it beautiful. It and does. And I love strawberries. Yes. Well, strawberries yeah. and kiwi. And all we're doing is reminding people that if you want to reduce drug addiction, teen pregnancy, teen suicide, hmm. the number one factor in all of that is a regular family meal. Really? It is the God's That seems so truth. simple. It, well, because life doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be, does it? No, not at all. And what I've tried to do even with my movement in the new book, this is called Dining with the Saints. Which I love the title. We want to remind people that if you want to get to heaven, you got to be hungry for it. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great statement, Father Leo. Thank you. Love it. And, you know, it all happened when I beat Bobby Flay on a Food Network throwdown. Season 7, Episode 1. And basically... <laughs> Not that anybody is remembering exactly. that. <laughs> and all that did was it literally got the whole people, the whole food world thinking there's got to be more than food just simply taking pictures on it for Instagram. Yeah. It really has a purpose. In fact, a theological purpose. Mm. That from the moment we were conceived in our mother's womb, no matter what the Supreme Court used to tell us, yes. that <laughs> life begins in the womb and God wants to feed us yes. with the good things of life. And so an that example, one's got some kiwi. That's got some kiwi. We're going to hit it with just a little bit more. Of this. Oh, let me do that. I, oh, yes, I just go for it. So want to Because if do you that. don't work, you don't eat. Jesus said so. Yeah, All right. I, so, <laughs> hey, I'm working, brother. I'm working. I want to eat some of this. And, and that's the real beauty. You know, like, um, I have a food truck, and look at you being all fancy and everything. That's like holy water for this man right now. <laughs> I'm a southern boy. Powdered there sugar you go. Powdered works, sugar. man. It, it does it. Absolutely. 
What I love about food is that it actually reminds people that we're human. Yeah. And humanity won't exist without food. And so uh, I do a lot of corporate talks reminding people that companies, the word company, kumpanis, means with bread. Mm. The best companies are the ones where the bosses eat with their employees, mm. kind of the way Jesus did with his disciples. No wonder your books are popular and you beat Bobby <laughs> Flay. And... Season seven, episode one. I don't know what. <laughs> 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 Love it. Hey, one of the recipes in here, I was looking through, and it is uh, it is called, what is that cod recipe? It's a cod recipe that, because the Portuguese love cod, and so I base it. God bless you, and I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, I can. And the beautiful thing is that the Portuguese love cod so much that I created a recipe, and I called it in cod we trust. In cod we trust. <laughs> I go. love that. <laughs> Absolutely love that. How clever. Yeah. Have you ever cut your finger doing it? Have I cut my finger? No, but uh, let me tell you, if I was mm. doing that balancing act that your previous uh, guest yeah, was doing, yeah. he made me pray. Uh, listen. Oh my gosh, he really <laughs> made me pray. So do we get to eat one of these things? You sure do, especially after we do a little blessing because all food is a blessing. Mm. So okay. go ahead, bon appetit, give all a right. little taste test. Well, we want to tell you that if you want to get Father Leo's delicious sauces and his latest book, Dining with the Saints... Now, it supports, by the way, when you get it, it supports Plating Grace. Or to find his TV show, Savoring Our Faith, go to Huckabee.tv. We will link you, and I think you're going to want to. Keith is going to tell us what tasty treat he has next. I'm going to eat some of this right now. Stay right where you are. A classic performance by T. Graham Brown is next. CEO and union buster Aaron With joins us along with the Bluegrass Supergroup Woodbox Heroes. Welcome back. T. Graham Brown is a country music superstar with over 15 studio albums and more than 28 hit singles on the Billboard and Gospel charts. He's had 14 top tens. Six of them are number ones, including classics like Don't Go to Strangers. And this year, he's celebrating the 35th anniversary of his number one smash hit, Darlene. It's such an honor to welcome back to the show T. Graham Brown. Yeah. Welcome. Excited that you're back. Wow, me too. One of the things that I found out about you is that you used to do jingles for all these companies that we know. We may not have all known that you did Taco Bell. Yeah. You did McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Ford, Dodge Trucks, Mountain Dew, Burger King. I mean, I mean, how did that Dr. come Dr. Pepper, about? Hardee's, Wendy's, KFC. If it was fast hey, food, did, you were there, I huh? Did, I did sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you did don't. Did you do that? For seven years, yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you ever find yourself just whistling or singing those little Yeah, jingles? as a matter of fact, uh, I, I was thinking today, I came up with a new one. Uh, Whoa, Big Mike, he ain't no bum. He gets a good night's sleep with relaxio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, Big Mike, he ain't no bore. Miss Janet, don't mind when he begins to snore. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably going to get hired by them to do the jingle. That's great. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Darlene was a number one smash hit for you. It's hard to believe that was 35 years I ago. I know, man. It but, is crazy. You know, this year, I've been doing this for a living for 50 years this year. That's fantastic. I know. It's crazy. You still love it, though. Man, I got... I got the greatest job in the world. I get to make people happy for a living. Well, and you do make people happy because your music is so powerful. One of the songs that you have done that has impacted, I mean, millions of people is a song called Wine Into Water. 
God is using that song, man, to yes, help people. He is. It's, it's a wonderful thing. Well, it's just a, a brilliant hook. I mean, when I think about the concept, you know, we know Jesus turned water into wine, but there are a lot of people for whom addiction is a problem. They need to turn their wine into water. Hey, that happened to power. me, man. I had a really bad drug and alcohol problem, and I, I would get on the horse, ride a while, fall off, and get on the horse, ride a while, fall off, but I just never could stay quit. Mm. And, man, this is a cliche of a story, but I woke up one morning, hung over, feeling terrible, nauseated, and I think, man, that I was just sick and tired of being tired and sick. And I remember it like it was yesterday. I, I, like I said, it's a cliche. I looked in the mirror, and I can remember saying out loud, man, what are you doing? Hmm. You're, you're about to blow everything. You're smarter than this. And for the first time, I asked God to help me, and from that second, I have not had one craving. Wow. It's a miracle, I'm telling you. Well, you're a miracle, but you're also one of the greatest blessings, and we love your music. And I think we ought to do some of it right now. What do you yeah, say? Yeah, man, I'm ready. All right. Well, while if we you'll get, play bass. I promise I will, whether you want me to or not. I'm going to do it. To. So while we get set up, Keith Belbury is going to tell all of you how to find more of the great music of T. Graham Brown and to see him live, because this guy's on the road all the time, and you should see him in person. Keith? For recordings, tour dates, and more, head to Huckabee.tv. You'll also find T. Graham's exclusive Huckabee performance of Wine into Water right there. Now, celebrating the 35th anniversary of his number one classic, Darlene, with Trey Corley and the Music City Connection and Mike on bass, here's my friend T. Graham Brown! Thanks, guys. Just hear me through And darling You don't need no other guys Now when you gonna realize How much I love you Darling Go Oh, 